do this session once a year um, at, at CiviCon, and normally I can refresh the slides from the previous year and just kind of talk through them. I think last year I'd even forgotten what the slides said, so I just kind of read them off. Uh, this year things have changed a bit, uh, and it's moved forwards, which means that I have to actually make new slides, um, which was a real, real shame. Um, so with that, you know, kind of refreshed everything. Um, so uh, for all of you who don't know me, I'm Jamie Novick. I'm here from CompuCorp. Um, we're a digital agency. We specialise in working with open source platforms. We do a lot, obviously, with Civi CRM, also with, with Drupal primarily. Uh, also work with some other open source platforms as well. Um, work with a number of different organisations, membership organisations, charitable organisations. Um, uh, some government organisations as well, doing a big project with Health Watch at the moment. Um, lots of different things with Civi. We like working with the core team to build new stuff. We like building bits of Civi. Um, that's the things that sort of gets us excited. Um, so um, we've also done quite a lot around the accounting over, over the years, um, and we're planning on doing uh, quite a bit more over the next uh, 12, well, six to 12 months. Um, so in terms of today, um, just to get an idea, how many people understand, have done some bookkeeping in the past and know anything about accounting at all? Okay, that, that's pretty good. Okay, so we've got, so maybe the other way, we've got three or four people who maybe have no idea what I'm going to be talking about at all, but we'll try and explain how it works. I am going to explain debits and credits and things like that. That will come up uh, if you don't know what those are. Um, you, you might, that might be a bit of a prerequisite um, to, to knowing a bit about it. So, um, so what I'm going to talk about today, so I'm going to do, talk about the basics of Civi CRM accounting, attempt to show people just how to do kind of like the basic configurations and what Civi does about accounting. Um, I'm going to talk about sales taxes in Civi CRM and how it kind of deals with sales taxes. Um, so that's VAT obviously, but you know it's not VAT in other places, so we've just called it sales taxes. Um, <coughs> invoicing uh, and how kind of Civi can produce invoices, uh, legal VAT invoices as well. Uh, one of the new things which is accruals accounting. Um, so I'll explain what that is uh, we, when, when we come to it, but in, in essence, um, you know, the idea is that you can't recognise the revenue for something until the benefit of it has actually been passed to the person. Uh, so how does Civi deal with that? Other exclamation mark. Uh, what's uh, what's in the what's behind door number three, uh, and uh, what's happening in the future? I can't remember what that slide is, but we'll get to it. I'm sure it will make itself known. Um, okay, so the basics of Civi CRM accounting. Oh, if anybody at any point gets a question, just stick your hand up, and you know there's enough of us to to, to kind of go through. Um, okay, uh, so I have split basics of Civi CRM accounting into. Why do we have accounting integration and then how it works? So I think it's, it's important to try and explain why do we even need accounting integration? I mean, surely it's obvious, right? So uh, we, we get a donation into Civi CRM uh, and then you know, I count up the amount of donations that I have and tell my finance officer that's the amount of donations that I have and then he can just put that in the account shortly. You know, that, that's, you know it's, it's quite simple. And, and for some organisations, that's it. And you don't need to touch the accounting integration. You never get near it, it's fine. And in fact, if, you know, maybe you get different types of donations. So we get some donations are for this, some donations are for that. Well, actually, we can just run a report off Civi, see how many donations of type A, B that we got this month, and then give that to our finance officer. He'll plug them into the accounting system. And, and that's all we need to worry about. You know, so job done. Um, but the problem is, what happens when somebody actually gets the <coughs> benefit of something, i.e. I, I sell them something, but they don't pay for it yet? So the example being you know, an event ticket that somebody wants to get registered for the event, but they're actually not paying for it yet. Um, and that has different implications for accounting. Um, so so that, that's kind of like the, the big thing, basically. Um, so that, that model basically breaks down as soon as we have that situation where actually, okay, somebody's going to um, you know, get the benefit, I'm buying my membership, I'm buying my event, um, but I'm not going to pay for it yet. Um, and, and so in that situation, we need a really robust way to tell the finance officer or the finance system, well, actually, at this stage, they've purchased the event ticket. So they bought an event ticket, um, but they haven't paid for it yet. 
And let's say a month later, which might be the next time we send the information to our finance officer, now they've paid for it. Um, and so obviously we could come up with our own solution to that and say, oh well in this situation we're going to send that information, this list of this and so on and so forth, which was probably what was happening in Civi until about version 4.3 when all this accounting integration came in. Um, so the solution is basically that Civi creates its own accounting entries based on the things that happen. So appropriate accounting entries for, based on the things that happen. Um, and we're able to export those accounting entries in a robust uh, way to pass them to our finance officer. So what do we mean by a robust way? Um, so <coughs> a robust way means that there won't be any double counting. So what could happen, for example, is that I have my list of people who bought event, uh, event tickets uh, this month who didn't pay for them. So let's say I've got 100 of those and they all bought them for £10 each, so it's £1,000 of revenue that we should recognise or we should see, uh, give or take, um, and we need to tell our finance officer that that is the case. Um, now, we need some really robust way of getting that out of Civi CRM and passing that to our finance team. Now, one way you might say, well, let's run a report. We'll run a report which tells us how many we had that month, and that report will then we'll send it to the finance officer. There we go, job done. But what happens then if somebody goes into the CRM and registers somebody after you've run that report? But during that period, oh, I actually forgot to record it in the CRM. Yeah, we did sell a ticket two weeks ago. All of a sudden, that report, you need to rerun the report again. But there's one extra transaction that's in there, and we haven't got it in there. So that's where reports break down as well. So we say, oh, the reports aren't quite good enough. So what you have instead is a process of batching. So basically, what happens with a batch is that we say, OK, what transactions happened during this period? And then we export those transactions into a batch, mark them as exported so that they can't be exported again, and then we say, right, that batch has gone off to finance. So then if you go back and you add in a transaction during that period, we can just create another batch. We can say, okay, well that batch covers some extra transactions from the last period that weren't picked up in the last batch. That's fine, they just weren't, they weren't passed to finance yet. So we know exactly what information has been passed out of the CRM to the finance people, which means that we keep the CRM in sync with, with the finance system. Any questions so far? Well, OK, cool, all right, you're pretending. Um, so one thing I should explain is that the default Civi CRM behavior for this is not real-time transfer of data. So there are things that you can do in order to do that, but the standard way of doing this in Civi CRM is that you create a batch manually, you download a CSV export, so you get your uh, Excel spreadsheet basically of the transactions and then you import that into the finance system <coughs> and that's very normal for CRM inter integrations. Okay, so how does this all work in Civi CRM? Um, pretty well uh, is the answer and then we can all go home. Uh, so number one, financial types. Um, so most people will be familiar with seeing on a contribution record if I go in and view this contribution record, we have the financial type. It's one of the most important fields, actually, for, for an accounting perspective. So what we're basically saying here is that this contribution, this money that's come in, um, this has a financial type, we see, of membership dues. And we've told the system that. So if we go back to what we were saying originally around um, you know, our donations, well, great, that just lets us subdivide the donations, so if we need to put donations of type 1 into income account 1, you know, we could do that manually, type 2 into, into income account 2, we could do that and just split them all up. So that, that's great, we, we can do that sort of thing. Once we get to the point of actually people buying, let's say, a membership and paying for it later, what we're actually doing here is we're recording the, the obligation to pay in the future. In, in essence, it's, it's like invoicing someone. We don't necessarily send the invoice from the CRM, but it's kind of that we're recognizing the revenue of that income. So we're saying, okay, right, we've, we've earned 200 pounds. Um, we haven't got the cash for it yet, but we've earned 200 pounds. So we're gonna recognize that. Um, so each of these financial types dictates the actual accounting codes um, <coughs> that Civi will use for that particular financial type as the contribution moves through its, its different statuses. Um, so, what you have is you have these, these, these four 
um, accounting codes that you can uh, that you can configure for each of those financial types. So what we're saying here is that member dues is going to have each of these four uh, financial codes assigned to it, so that the system knows what to do with a membership to co contribution type. So what are, what, are the, what are the basics of this? So I'll, I'll give an example. Um, so some basic accounting here. Um, correct me if, if any of the accounting goes wrong, and put your hands up if, it, if, it, if, uh, if anybody has any questions. But um, So if somebody makes a, a payment pending, uh, for a membership. So they create, uh, somebody registers for a membership uh, and they say I'm going to pay later for that membership. Sorry, some of this is assumed knowledge from, from working with Civi. Uh, I assume you all know how to do that. Um, then what in effect the accounting entries for that should be, um, in a simple world, let's keep it simple, um, if the membership costs £100, would be that we would credit income, so people who know their debits and credits, you credit income, uh, and then you would debit the asset that you would get for that, so accounting entries always have to be balanced, uh, of the equivalent of 100 pounds, and the asset that we have for that is what we would call an accounts receivable, as in we're owed 100 pounds. So we make an entry which says we're owed 100 pounds, and we make another entry which is on the profit and loss statement, which is to say we've uh, earned 100 pounds. So we've sold membership, we get 100 pounds, but we have, if, if you notice here, we haven't actually received the cash of £100 at this stage. Everybody still with me so far? Yeah, kind of? Probably, no? Uh, we'll leave. Um, so later on, what will happen is somebody will pay for that membership. They'll pay that outstanding balance that they owe you. They owe you £100. Uh, and when that happens, what we do is we reduce the amount we owed, the accounts receivable by 100 so that's a credit. So previously it was a debit, now it's a credit. Uh, and we would debit cash, which is the new asset that we've got. So now we've actually got the cash. Okay? So that reverses out the accounts receivable, so we've not owed anything, and now we actually have the cash. Okay, so that's what Civi does. Um, if I go in here, and actually I'm going to do it on something else. Let's get somebody, Bob Barkley, on Bob. Called a contribution. Let's just say membership dues. Uh, I'm going to say it's pending, which is Civi's understanding of something not being paid yet. And I'm going to say it's hundred pounds. Uh, and I'm just going to save that. Um, so if I now go, I'm, I'm doing this a little bit, um, not quite the way you want to do it. So what you can see here, um, a bit not very clear, in slightly different format to the way that I've done it, is that the debit, which has got to this uh, 1,200, actually I'm just going to add a, an extra field here, it's a bit easy to read. So what you can see, City's done that. It said accounts receivable, <coughs> we're owed, uh, and because because um, the two lines are the same amount, basically this will always happen as one transaction because these always have to be in balance. That's how accounting works. So if people don't know that your debits and credits always have to add up. That's that's, the thing. that's, that's how we make sure that everything works in the end. So we're saying 100, and then we've got 100 to accounts receivable, 100 to cash. Oh, sorry, not 100 to cash. It's uh, this first day of 100 to income and 100 to accounts receivable. And you see I've got 100 to accounts receivable and 100 to an income code, which is called member dues. So if we were to export this out <coughs> of our batch, um, we could send that straight to the finance officer and he's got this line which kind of says, okay, well, we're owed an extra 100 pounds, so he knows about that. 
And obviously over the course of the month, you'll get hundreds of these or thousands of these or tens of thousands of these coming in. And then you just batch export those out. Um, so if I do that, um, I'm just going to do accounting batches, new batch. I think I'm dropping ahead here on my slides, but anyway. Uh, say if there are some filters here that you can do, you know, which just help you how, you, how you're creating your batch. Um, and I look down here and I try and find, so these are all the transactions in the system which are yet to get batched at the bottom. Uh, and Bob will be in here somewhere. So there's our Bob one there. Uh, and you can see it's actually pending. Um, and I can actions assign that to the batch. And there we go, I put that into the batch and then I can close and export the batch. I won't, I won't do that yet, but just, just to explain. So then I can do that, it'll give me a CSV. And that transaction which I've just created has now been batched and can't be bashed again, so that it only happens once. Cool, all right. Um, so, as I said, the next step is that we'll complete that payment. So there's gonna be another accounting transaction that's gonna come from that. So, I go back to my man Bob. Me, me, man Bob. Uh, and I'm gonna go, uh, let's just do this a simple way. Uh, Pending, I'm going to mark it as completed. Yeah, save. I received the money. I got the check. Hundred pounds turns up. So we hopefully I've installed some stuff that might. But you can see now that this transaction is completed. Um, if I go back to my bookkeeping transactions report and refresh this, the bookkeeping transaction. You shouldn't use that for your batching. Just to be clear, I'm just doing this to kind of show you the transactions that are there. The, you know, the, the bookkeeping transaction doesn't have batching. That's that's kind of the the, the point of the batching stuff. Um, but you can see this extra transaction here, which is the um, deposit bank account. So the the finance, the money's gone into the, the bank account, uh, and we've reversed it out of accounts receivable. So see, accounts receivables on the other side now as it was before. So it's just done those two transactions that we were we were talking about on the on the slides basically. Um, and if I go to my accounting batch, um, and maybe I have to click search again. Uh, Bob, 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 Bob Barclay, there we go, there's our 100. So there's the second transaction there, which has changed it to uh, completed. And if I assign that to the batch, so now those two transactions are in my batch. Are the bookkeeping transactions, is that a separate, because uh, I'm using contributions, but I'm not quite sure where you get the bookkeeping transactions tab from. It's, it's all in core Civi. Uh, it depends which exact version of Civi is to exactly how you 4. see it. Point seven. Yeah, so like, it's all in there. So, I mean, it, it's just doing this stuff in the background. So whether or not you choose to actually export these batches, it's just doing it in the background anyway. Uh, that last slide with bookkeeping transactions, was that part of the batch? This bit, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, this is just example, I'm just no. trying to explain the accounting, but Civi's, yeah. Civi's um, doing those transactions for yes. you. And then if you went into the new batch screen, you can just export those transactions. So you don't have to worry about all of this stuff, I'm just kind of explaining how it, how it works. Does that help? Yeah. I, 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 I won't. The, the bookkeeping was book a report. It's oh, a report. A I yeah, sorry. sorry. This, this was just a report. Right. This one. Here, okay. Yeah. But I, I, just to be clear, I would recommend you sorry. don't use this because no, it I doesn't don't. batch things. I don't. So this is just to kind of see what's going on for me to explain to you guys. So this because yeah, okay. if I if Thank I you. add a transaction for last month in there, yeah, and I've already run the report, give it to yeah. finance. Mm -hmm. It won't. You know, you won't pick that up when you run your next report. Um. So so okay. So everybody okay with that? I mean, that, that's kind of it. You know, that, that's like, so that's what's going on with Civi. As you mess around with your contributions, create them, uh, payments, all of those kind of stuff, it's just creating these uh, accounting transactions in the back. And if you want to export them, then you can export them out to um, to to your finance system. Uh, yeah, so I've explained accounting patches. Keep up, keep up slides. Uh, create the batch, assign batch, close and export the batch. Uh, closed batch may be reopened, but an exported batch may not. So just be aware of that. You'll need to fit around the database if you do choose to export to batch um, in order to uh, to make changes to it in the future. Um, okay, so sales tax. I don't have a watch, so some people are looking into time. Sales taxes. Um, so um, Civi does sales taxes, um, and um, 
quick run of how, it, how it, uh, the features for it. So it will show the sales tax amount on event registrations, membership sign-up forms. Uh, if any of you are in the web form session as well, if you're selling things through web form, it'll, it'll pass those through. Um, there's some configurable display options. So some people prefer to have it £100 plus VAT, some people say £120, but £20 VAT, whatever it may be. Um, it processes the sales tax based on the rules that you provide to it. So you're going to tell Civi, oh, I should have showed that, but we'll, we'll come to that. Uh, you're going to tell Civi what the percentage is for sales tax on any particular financial type. So it's attached again to the financial types. Um, so there's support for percentage-based taxes. I believe there's some support for, um, if you're dealing with clients who are selling stuff in Canada, US and things like that, I think there is some support for um, the two levels of taxes that you need to have there, but um, I haven't looked into that in detail. Uh, I mentioned integration with Webform CRM, so important it made it twice to the slide. Um, okay, so um, I meant to show you guys actually how you configure all of this stuff to, to make it work. Um, so we'll do that now. Um, the financial types, Civi contribute financial types. So this is where I'm saying, okay, what are my contribution, you know, different categories basically. So I've got donation, event fee, and membership dues. And Civi comes out of the box with these as well, so that they're kind of there, but you can you can play around with these. What you can see is each one, as I said before, is attached to a financial, you know, different financial accounts. Um, and you're able to set up as well your financial accounts here. This is probably the bit that you want a little bit of help from a bookkeeper, um, or if you happen to be the bookkeeper, then you'll be totally fine doing it yourself. Um, but in essence, this is building your chart of accounts in Civi, so it knows what they are. So if you're familiar with that. Um, <coughs> and the chart of accounts is anything that you want Civi to, to post these to uh, in terms of the accounting transactions. So um, it's those. So accounts receivable, cash. Normally in your accounting system, those have a number um, and a code. Uh, and you can put all of those details into into Civi. Um, so here is all the uh, all the all the different ones that are built in. Uh, it's unlikely that your accounting system is going to align 100% to this, so you probably want to go in and, and, and add different things to it. Um, now you can just go and add financial account here, name of the account. Uh, don't worry too much about owner. That's if you've got multiple domains. Um, specify what type of account it is. Uh, oh, one bite to the dust. Uh, asset, <laughs> assets, liabilities, uh, revenue, cost of sales, expense. If you know anything about how your, uh, I'm not going to give people a full accounting lesson here, but you've got your balance sheet, which is your assets minus your liabilities, and then you've got your uh, profit and loss, which will be revenue, uh, cost of sales, and expenses. So you can kind of specify where this accounting code fits in. Um, and this clever thing here, which says is tax, um, that's the all-important box that um, will, will tell the system that it needs to add it as a, a, as a sales tax and the tax rate that you're adding to that. Um, I actually don't think I've set up the sales taxes on this one, so I might have to bludgeon my way through it a little bit. Let's have a go at it. Um, so we've got the event fees here. So let's see if we can add to our... So you might have two different event fees, for example. You might have an event fee which is no tax. You might have an event fee which is 20%. VAT, something like that. Uh, so I'm going to add a uh, type to event fee, 20%. It's been a while since I've done this, uh, so if I if I merit up, I apologise. Um, technical term. Uh, so here I'm going to specify the accounts, it, and you can see that the system automatically picks some some basic accounts for me. Um, but it's saying, okay, if if somebody uses this financial type, where should I recognise the income to? Uh, and here it's, it's created for me, actually, a new financial account called Event Fee 20%. So if I refresh this, uh, Event Fee 20%, you can see that one's there. So it's saying, okay, revenue uh, is, is going to that new financial account, great. Um, accounts receivable is, well, it's just putting it to the general accounts receivable. Most organisations just have one uh, accounts receivable ledger, which is how much are we owed. Others might split that up because they say, well, actually, we're owed this amount for this, this amount for this, this amount for this, and they have different treatments. So uh, we'll keep it as it is. Um, expense account is, um, that's for any uh, payment processor fees. So if the payment processor actually tells Civi about the fact that it's charging two pounds or something on the transaction, then Civi will record that back into the accounting fees and deduct it. Um, 
and cost of sales account is on the premium. So uh, I don't really want to explain this in a lot of detail. You can sell premiums, they're like selling products uh, as part of like, a contribution page. Uh, if there's a cost to that project product when you sell it, it will record that as well. I haven't done a lot with those things. I don't have to see a lot of those, but you know, just, just so you're aware it does that. So the ones you care about, income accounts and the accounts receivable, um, those are the big ones. Um, and uh, it, it, the, the place that the, uh, so you can see there's kind of one step missing here, which is that, okay, so if I, if I sold my membership, I need to know what the income is, okay? So that's gonna go to my income account. I need to know what my accounts receivable is, as in, uh, you know, the fact that I'm gonna say that I'm owed this amount, which accounts that's gonna do. Uh, one thing you can't see here is then, okay, well, which cash account, you know, does this go into? And actually that's di dictated by the payment method. So if somebody then pays for it later, if they pay by cash, it will go into the cash account. If they pay by payment processor, i.e. credit card, it will go into the payment processor account. So that's kind of configured in a, in a different place. Um, technical <coughs> doesn't turn, but bear with me. So I'm also going to add then, uh, if I remember how to do this, a sales tax account. Um, and I don't have one. So I'm going to set one up first. Uh, so I'm going to call this uh, sales, uh, let's say VAT, Creditor. Um, so what we're basically saying here is that when I get VAT, where do I, I owe that VAT to the tax man? Uh, and actually, you might have lots of different people that you owe uh, different VAT. So VAT UK tax man, you might have VAT for uh, Netherlands tax. You might have VAT for another one, depending on what you're selling and who you're selling it to. Um, so you're able to set up lots of these different accounts. Um, so here I'm going to put this, and it's a liability because I owe the tax man that money. Uh, I might put this, you know, maybe this is VAT 100. Um, and here I'm going to say is tax, and I'm going to put it as 20%, and God willing, I've done this correctly. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my accounts here, and I'm going to assign an account, and it's going to be a sales tax account is, and I'm going to say VAT quota, great. Fantastic. Now, if the small chance that I've done this correctly, I select event fee, whoops, 20%, and I put 20, yes, amount with tax is saying 24, yes, small victories. Um, so um, I'm just going to go on from the slides here. So we've configured all of that up. You can see that for each contribution type now, I've got all of these accounts set up, it's figuring out. Everybody's still with me? Kind of? Ish. Okay, so what should the accounting entries be um, if uh, I'm doing a pending membership with VAT? So what we're saying here is that the membership costs £100, but with VAT it's 120 And the way the accounting works for this is that you actually say, okay, the credits uh, should be 100 which is what I recognise the income, which is the, non, the VAT exclusive price. That's what I've actually earned from this whole transaction. 20 is the VAT that I've earned from or will receive from this from this transaction. That goes straight to your creditor account on your balance sheet, which means that you owe that to the VAT man. So I owe that, so it's a credit on the balance sheet. And then the accounts receivable is my asset, which is 120. So that's how much I'm hoping to receive in the future. Someone's going to give me 120 pounds. Uh, there's 20 pounds of that I'm going to have to give to the VAT man, and 100 pounds of it I recognise as revenue. Okay, um, getting a little bit more complicated now. Um, so, so that's the kind of the starting point, and and basically, Civi will do that for you. Um, I'm going to save a little bit of time by not actually going through and creating the transactions and showing all of that, but that's what Civi will create if you set up that VAT um, on here. So, if I save this and put it as pending, um, that's what it's going to do for Bob. Uh, go on. Refresh results. Uh, where are you? Event fees, something like that, 20, 100. I've confused myself as to what it's doing. Uh, it's put credit, debit, accounts receivable, event fees, 20. There's something, isn't there? And I'm going to fuss about it, but yes, it, it creates the accounting. <coughs> um, obviously, the next step in that is that you're then going to receive the cash. So then I'm going to say debit cash 120, 
and then I no longer owed anything, so I credit the accounts receivable. So credit, everybody's going to get really confused by the debits and credits here. Uh, so remember, dead click, I think, is what I got taught at accounting college. So it's uh, 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 debits, expenses, assets, something else, click, uh, which is credit, liabilities, income, and so on and so forth. So it depends which you're doing. So if you're on one side, check your accounting stuff, but it's right. Uh, so anyway, so we ended up with the cash receivable, 120 in cash, and again, you can export that stuff out. Uh, I've shown you guys how to configure that, hopefully. Uh, and just one other thing, so you can set various different settings um, for the way that the uh, sales tax is kind of uh, like global settings. Uh, and those are under CIVI, sorry, I'll show that a little bit slower. Uh, those are under administer, uh, CIVI contribute, and then CIVI contribute component settings. Lots of clever stuff going on in there. Um, so that's this. Um, and here you can see that you set uh, sales tax here. So you set tax terms. So I might change that to be VAT. Um, show tax term excluded. So that's like your different display options. So that decides how uh, CIVI is going to display this on public forms, depending on how you want to do that. Any questions on sales taxes? Cool. Okay. Can, uh, I, can I ask one, Jane? Yeah. Can I have a contribution page for membership? And can I have one taxable membership and one non taxable membership on the same page? Or would I need two separate ones? Um, so the, the VAT attaches to the financial type. Oh, which I Yeah. Know. And the financial type, then you can decide for the memberships. Sure. So if you make a price set that has uh, the different types, then you can do that. And you can, so any price set, okay. if it's event fees as well, so you, then you can say, oh, actually, the, the bus, <coughs> the transport to the event is no VAT, but the event ticket itself has VAT. I don't know why it would be that way around. Or the okay. book that they buy has no VAT, something like that. So you can set it all up, different VAT rates and all of those kind of things. Okay. So one thing that we do do sometimes is that you have some organizations which have a donation portion and a uh, VATable membership portion of their membership payment uh, that people pay monthly or annually or whatever it may be. And you can set that kind of stuff up as having two lines, basically. Um, and we've created some extensions and things that help to make it so that you have to buy both at the same time in, in, in work form. Uh, OK, so invoices. Um, OK, so um, Civi can do all of this stuff without actually creating invoices. Why is that? Well, um, you might, invoices need to be, to, in order to be that legal, need to be sequentially numbered. Uh, why is that? Well, in the olden days, that was kind of their way of ensuring that nobody was cheating the Batman, because if you know, suddenly invoice number 300 disappeared, and that was for 10,000 pounds, you know, they go, well, where's invoice 300? You say, oh. I don't know, it's gone, it didn't make it. You know, so their way of kind of saying was, okay, well, invoice 300 is missing and therefore you owe us whatever it may be. So invo obviously that's a, a meaningless concept these days, but that's still how it works. Um, so you know, invoices need to be uh, se sequentially numbered. So you know, normally you'd have them coming out of your finance system if you were actually creating uh, invoices. Um, and um, so a, a lot of, a lot of uh, organizations who use CRM, what they'll do is they'll say, Okay, you bought your event ticket online, you haven't paid for it, so it's pay later. Um, we'll tell our finance team and they'll issue an invoice to you. You know, So you kind of get that invoice because it's the person who wants the invoice in order to know that they have an obligation to pay. Um, sometimes because they need a purchase order and all of those kind of things on it. Um, so what people wanted was basically, well, I don't want to keep telling my finance people in order to create this invoice. What I want to do is get the CRM to do it as well. Uh, instead, sorry, and do it automatically. Um, so that's what Civi does. Um, so if you switch on the uh, the invoicing bit, uh, I've lost myself. So um, enable tax and invoicing. So actually, one thing with Civi is that you, you kind of have to enable the two of these together. Um, but if you do that, it, it switches on a bunch of stuff. Uh, and so, it, and it's a one-to-one -one relationship between the contributions and the invoices. So each contribution is, in effect, an invoice. Um, you don't have to think about it like that if you don't want to, but that's kind of where how the data model works. 
And if I go to this, there should be a button which is uh, print invoice, wonderful. And any minute now I'll have a beautiful invoice, which hopefully is going to say the right numbers on it. So yeah, so you can see just about, what have I sold out? There's a contribution, 20 pounds, 20% uh, VAT, the VAT is there, and it's 24 in total basically, and please pay us. Um, so Civi will generate those for you. Um, now, they can be automatically emailed when somebody purchases something, so from a membership or an event, it will just attach the PDF to the email, it files it out, so you get the receipt and you get the, the invoice, uh, or the confirmation, uh, sorry, the confirmation of the receipt, let's be clear. Um, admin can download them from the admin interface as I've just shown you. You can actually also uh, search for these and send them in bulk. So if you search and do find contributions, uh, and then I'll just want search. Should we maybe um, user generated? So for example, in membership, it's not really ever appropriate to see invoice to do a renewing membership. Mm. But quite often, if they come in paying for something, they'll want an invoice. Mm. Um, is there any way of kind of opening that side up to the user themselves if they've logged in, they could just... Just about to get there, yeah. yeah excellent. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I was just going to say, so invoices, print or email, so you click that and then you can uh, either email them or print them. If you email them, you can add a little message and, and so on and so forth with the, with the template and stuff. So you, could, you can send them out in batches, so it might be that you guys renew somebody's memberships, uh, it creates a bunch of new pending uh, contributions and then you want to send those out in bulk so then you can kind of do that, that workflow. Um, and the bit that Adam, uh, Adam was just saying, um, people can also download their invoices from the contact dashboard. Um, so what's the contact dashboard? I hear you all cry. Uh, if I go to user, uh, it's a page that CBCRM creates for each uh, contact. Uh, view contact dashboard. Um, if you have a look in the permissions, you can switch it on or off. Uh, and here you have your contributions, and on the right hand side, you have print invoice. So the system will, because it's a one to one relationship with contributions, it automatically creates an invoice. It, it, it just is. They're sequentially numbered because the contributions are sequentially numbered, uh, and you can print, print, print the invoice. And apparently, you can also pay for them as well. So that's, that's quite nice. So if somebody wants to pay for them online, they can, they can come to that. Um, does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and yeah, if you if you credit note or refund an invoice, then the equivalent thing is is downloaded. It just attaches the credit note and, and so on. Uh, you can modify the template for your invoice because obviously nobody wants the Civi CRM logo to be on their invoice. So it's it's just a message template for people who are familiar with that. Um, so you can just go and, and do that. Uh, so if you make changes, you can always revert it, keep a copy of it. Okay. Uh, yes. You. Um, so you mentioned you have to enable sales, uh, sorry, the, the tax and invoicing together as one tick box. Yes. If you don't Config. that. Yes. You don't add any VAT accounting codes. As far as Civi's concerned, it's, you know, the VAT is never, it's not going to add any VAT to anything. So that's why the two are together, because it was just kind of built together. Right. But in terms of what it's then producing for an invoice, is it... It, it's, still, it it's still, it's still bad. Yeah, it just won't show. Yeah, it just say zero. Right. It'll just say, uh, no, it'll just say no VAT, basically. There won't be a line for VAT. Okay. Yeah. I don't know exactly how, but it, it still works and it just comes out as zero. Right. Okay. Yeah. So really just first thing to do. Yeah. I mean, so the bottom line is, if, if you're doing, if you're doing invoicing, um, like this, this, Somebody might correct me if I'm wrong here, but like if you're doing invoicing, there's no point in doing invoicing unless you're VAT registered. Because the whole point of doing uh, sequentially numbered invoices is for being VAT legal. The rest is just confirmation of payments, right? So which Civi does anyway. Yeah. But the reason for having invoicing is that they're sequentially numbered and you're collecting the VAT. That's the whole purpose of it. So um, when you once you enable the invoicing, you need to be doing the VAT right, even if you're not charging VAT because you might be you might be recovering VAT and whatever it may be, but you still need to do the VAT right even if nothing that you sell is VATable and it's zero percent on everything you sell. That might be the case because everything is donation blah 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 blah. But you st you still need to collect it. So yeah. okay. Um cruels accounting. Okay, uh, so we had most people here were kind of bookkeepers, so you're following me as, as we're going. Uh, let's go a little bit deeper into accounting. 
Um, so why accruals accounting? I don't really like the term accruals accounting uh, for this particular thing. I think it's, it's probably more useful to think of it as deferred income accounting. Um, but why do we have accruals accounting? Okay, so basically, um, when you're, the whole point of accounting is that we figure out what profit you've made this year to give a fairly accurate view of how the organization is doing. Um, now, the cash that you receive is not necessarily one-to-one -one with the profits that you make uh, and the losses that you make as well. Um, because you might receive the cash many years later or you might receive the cash up front and then have to deliver the service. So for example, let's say there's a service you're going to deliver over five years. Um, you receive uh, 500 pounds up front. Um, actually, you know, it wouldn't be right to say that we made 500 profit in the first year because actually I've got to deliver that service over five years. So the accounting, uh, the, the accounting, um, uh, the IFRS, the standards would say, well actually you need to recognise the benefit, the revenue of that over the course of the, of the five years. Um, so, um, just to read out, revenues are recognised when they are realised or realisable, so there's this term of realisation. Um, and are earned, usually when goods are transferred or services are actually rendered, no matter when the cash is received. Um, so just to understand, the whole point of this is that the cash is separate from, from, from when you recognise the revenues. Um, so why do we have this accruals account? Why does this matter for CBCRM? CRM? Well, it matters for CBCRM, CRM, uh, and this is where it gets complicated, basically because, let's say an event, it doesn't take place when people buy the tickets. You deliver the benefit of the event when the event takes place. So technically, you shouldn't recognise the revenue for that event until the event actually takes place. So if you're doing that, slight, slightly incorrect, I mean obviously it depends on your accountant, uh, so and so forth. The same is true for membership, and probably you know, more complicated than membership, which is that, let's say somebody signs up for membership on 1st of January. Um, but let's say that your accounting year runs until 31st of March. Um, so if somebody pays £120 for that membership on the 1st of January, you should only really recognise 30 out of the £120 during that first year for the first three months, because you're only going to deliver 3 twelfths of the benefit in that first accounting period. Everybody still with me? Yeah, yeah, cool, okay, good, yeah, that's, that's the tough one. Um, so, but what happens to the other 90, right? So, we, you know, because we, we, where does that go? Um, so that's what we call deferred income. Um, and it's this wonderful thing that accountants have made, which really helps you when you've got to do your tax calcs at the end of the year. If you want to get your tax down, then you put it all into deferred income as much as you can because it reduces your profit and therefore you pay less tax, just letting you know. Um, so we have this concept of deferred income and that 90 is, is deferred income. It's a bit like uh, money that, or the income that we've received but we can't recognise yet because we actually owe it to somebody in case we aren't able to deliver that benefit in the future. Um, so this is the inside scoop, people. This is why, you know, all of these Enrons and everything failed. Uh, so, um, so how, how how does this work? Um, so, if we imagine um, that uh, somebody, this is going to get a little bit confusing, but let's go with it. Um, so somebody pays 120 for membership. Um, Basically, and let's just keep it really simple. Let's just say that they're paying cash straight away and we've got the cash and they're paying up front. We're not going to do any of the pay later stuff. Um, what's going to happen? Well, immediately on that date that they bought the membership, um, 120 of cash I received, I've got 120, but they haven't had any membership yet because they, nothing's passed. They've just paid for it. Um, actually, all of that 120 should go into deferred income. So we're saying, okay, well, I can't recognise it as real income yet. I can't put it in my profit and loss statements. It doesn't make my profits higher because I haven't delivered it yet. Actually, what I'm saying is I'm going to put that on the balance sheet. It's actually a liability. I owe them that money in case I can't deliver the service. Okay, so it depends on the contract and how it all works, but, but, but that's it, right? So big exclamation mark, no revenue is recognised at this point. Um, so now... Technically, what you would want every second of the day is to release that second of revenue you know, through your accounts to say, okay, right, one second has passed of membership that I provided them, and therefore you know, I can recognise another second's worth of the membership. Obviously, that's not feasible. Um, so the way that SIBI does this is it does it on a monthly basis. So what it actually does is it says, okay, well, every month what I'm going to do is I'm going to release... Um, 10 of the deferred income, uh, so debit, I'm going to reduce the deferred income by 10, and therefore put in, that shouldn't say receivables, 
That shouldn't say receivable. That should say income. Ignore that. Uh, and credit income for 10. And that's going to happen every month. So by the end of the year, after 12 months uh, of the membership, 120 will have been released, and I won't owe that person anymore because I've delivered the entire service, um, and I will have recognised the entire income. But every month when I do my monthly report, or my batching, which is going to go off to my finance, my finance dude, um, he's going to have an extra 10 that he can recognise appropriately through, the, uh, through his uh, accounts. So your management accounts, if you produce them on a monthly basis, should show, that rev should show that revenue, show how you're doing through the year, and you can compare that to budgets and so on and so forth. Um, so notice that no cash changes because we already have the cash. You know, somebody paid us up front for this stuff. So what we're doing here is purely magic accounting you know, sort of stuff where it's kind of all uh, just moving things that don't really exist around. It's wonderful. Um, and I was going to show that. I, I don't know if I really want to show this. I think it's going to get a bit confusing if I show it. Um, so, how do you, let's keep it simple. Uh, and also because my battery is running out. Uh, we're going to do CV contribute component settings. Basically, all you have to do is click this button, enable deferred revenue, and the rest CV will do for you. Um, I did um, set up then, uh, if you go to administer, uh, I made a membership type, which is a 12 month membership type for 120 here. Uh, very briefly, uh, if I did that membership dues and uh, 120, oh I think I actually had to record a membership, if I did it as a membership, it will break it down into those 12 transactions. It actually creates all 12 of the transactions up front and sets them at the right month date. So um, just when you come to do the batch export, if you just export the ones, it'll have the correct dates. Trust me, it works. It, it, it's fine. Um, so cool. All right, so other things that are new in 2017, there was quite a lot of work. There's also one for events, mm. and it's put in the event Yeah, exactly, and it, and it transfers. I haven't tried that one, oh, but, okay. uh, but I'm pretty sure that on the date of the event, it then has the transaction that uh, reverses it out. Um, come back to me if it's any different. Um, so a couple of other things just to mention. Um, uh, Joe Murray, uh, based in Canada, JMA Consulting, they've done uh, a lot of work on the finance uh, of Civi, so a lot of this stuff was stuff that they did. Um, but there's a couple of things that might be useful, and there's some ongoing work that, that's going to be happening, but the ability to edit uh, line items uh, on a contribution now... Uh, I think I've installed that. So yeah, you get this little thing here which allows you to kind of edit the line item uh, and make changes to it, so that's quite cool. Uh, and uh, show balance on contributions, so balance due. So obviously that's, that's key, you know, if somebody owes us some money because the payments now can be, you know, you can have multiple payments against the contribution. Um, and you can make journal entries directly. I haven't uh, entered that in. Um, personally, I'm not quite sure why why you would want to do that, I really think the journal entry should probably happen in your accounting system, but in case they do need to happen in Civi, then you can do them in Civi with that as well. Um, and I mean, the, the thing to explain is that um, where Civi is headed is basically the, the contribution, in effect, even though it, you know, you, it, it's basically becoming a bit like your invoice in the system. So you don't have to have it as your invoice, it doesn't force you to do that. Um, the contribution can still just be your record of somebody having made the donation, uh, so if you're keeping things simple. But as things start to get more complex, as people owe you money, the, it, the record of the contribution itself um, becomes a bit like your invoice. So if it's got a status of pending, that's an invoice that somebody owes to you. Um, that is the obligation, that's a record of the obligation of somebody to pay you something. Um, marking that contribution then to completed says, actually, I've received the payment, and so people will then re re record the payment record. Uh, when you have a pending contribution, uh, you can tuck it away in a batch and disappear as you export the batch, but then uh, you go back later to the uh, contact and uh, you've got the money, you edit the thing and it um, becomes a completed contribution. Uh, at that stage, you maybe want to change the check number and the date. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it appears again as uh, uh, the same contribution to be um, yeah, so updated the into your accounts. It was 
really confusing for the first. <laughs> I, I agree. Um, I like so my personal views on this is that the and this is something that I was going to talk about as like the, the future things. So to explain a little bit, the history is that Civi came when it was a fundraising database, a contribution was just it. That was it. So you had a contribution, it kind of didn't have a status, it's just if you record a contribution, that's the donation. Um, so the the first round of kind of the accounting integrations was well, we don't want to stop that being the case, but we want to add in a little bit of accounting. Um, and so that's why you ended up in this model of the pending completed contribution. Now, what really needs to happen is that you need to separate out the contribution, which is the obligation to pay, from the payment itself very clearly. And that's something that's going to happen over the next three to six to nine months um, as we start to kind of untangle those two concepts and make it a lot clearer. But yeah, you're right. At the moment, it's, it's not that clear. Um, but you know, it, it, it works for what it works, and it's just not to upset the people who are kind of using it without all that yeah. separation. If that mm. makes sense. Um, so, um, two things to, to mention. Um, so, uh, other things. There's a zero integration. So, if anybody's heard of the accounting system zero, um, it, it, I think it needs updating for version 4.7. I think it's 4.4 or 4.5 at the moment. So. Um, you know, but I don't think it would be a big job to do that, a couple of days of work or something like that, uh, which is really nice for smaller organisations who might want to sync things, and that does electronic syncing. So basically every contribution in Civi actually gets an invoice in zero. so if you're using zero already, that's, that's worth checking out. I'm, I'm not sure, I think we have working on 4.7, like I, oh. I think it might still say 4.4 4.6, but I don't think there's actually any changes that have to be made. Awesome, awesome information. Okay, even better. Um, and actually, I've got a question for that. How many how many contacts do you have in your zero database? Um, depends on the client. Okay. Do you, I mean, what's the most? What's the scale? Is it? Got? Not sure. Okay. So one thing that the only thing we we were talking about it with a client, and um, what we found is that zero does have a limit to the number of contacts they recommend having in there. So I think it's like if you get to like ten thousand contacts, they're not too happy about it. Whereas Civi could have hundreds of thousands of contacts. So, yeah. you know, so that is just one thing to be aware. So, one of the other options is that we're doing an integration with a product called Odoo, uh, which is an open source ERP system, which is also worth checking out. Um, so, it, it's not as nice open source as Civi is. It's a little bit more corporate world, um, but it's like a finance system that's uh, open source and it's got some other bits and pieces as well. Um, so, I mentioned that as well. So, we're doing some work with that. Um, and coming soon, oh, it's on there twice, uh, payment plans. So um, we're going to be, uh, so at the moment you can have uh, payment by installments in Civi. So there's this recurring payments and direct debits and things like that. We're going to be doing some big work around uh, robust support for memberships paid by installments so that Civi really understands the way that those are working and that somebody can sign up for something that's got 12 monthly installments and that all makes sense. And if they fail payment number three, um, that you can come back in and it all kind of makes sense and does the appropriate things. Jamie, do you know anyone who's going to this integration? So, correct me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that Civi's QuickBooks integration does kind of work as like, but it's it's like an, a batch export in the same way. I don't, yeah, I don't think there's a electronic. So a lot of the things, so it's like access dimensions and all of this is another one that a lot of people use, but I don't think it has an API for you to integrate with. Cool, right, I've got like 10 seconds, so if anybody's got a question really, really quickly. No, that's it. Cool, thank you very much. <laughs>